through this right now. And we need you in a way that <laughs> we've never needed you before. When storms show up, and they will. Storms are inevitable. Crisis is inevitable. Conflict is inevitable. When it does, you don't have to lose heart. You don't have to flip out. Just holler out to the one. And we always sing about it. Holler out to the one and we always preach about it. Pray to you. Just cry out to him. And the Bible says that when they woke him up, he woke up. And he says something that many church people have celebrated for decades, for, for centuries. He uses a phrase that many of us get happy about every time we hear it. I can't quote from the New International Version when I quote this. Because the New International Version says, quiet, be still. What is that? No. We don't know what that means. The King James Version tells us what really happened. Jesus says, peace, be still. Oh, children of God, hear me when I tell you that the Lord Jesus still knows how to speak peace to storm-tossed seas. He still knows how to speak peace to storm-tossed situations. He still knows how to speak peace to storm-tossed minds and hearts and spirits. He knows how to calm the situation. The Bible says when Jesus said peace, there was a great calm. Everything settled down. He spoke to the winds that he created. He spoke to the water that he created. And he told his own creation to be still, to be quiet. Listen, there is absolutely nothing that your Jesus does not have control over. Whatever you go through, whatever you deal with, whatever you experience, your Jesus has control over it and he can calm it down. Can I get three witnesses in the of these prophets that he still knows? Everything goes to calm. Yeah. Everything's all right. But it's not over. Because yeah. they're still in the middle of the water. Yeah. It's not over. Because they're still not where Jesus said they were on their way. May I please tell you that despite the crisis, we are still called to move forward until we have faithfully moved to completion. Yeah. Completion. Listen, we are not called just to get stuck out in the middle of something. We are called to completion. Yeah. We are called to completion. How do I know we're called to completion? We stopped in verse in chapter four and we closed out the end of the reading when Rabbi Williams read to us. But if you read chapter five, verse one, chapter five, verse one says, when they got to the other side of the lake. Yes. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I said, when they got to the other, what was the original intent? The original intent was, let's pass over to the other side. And when that happened, no matter how great the storm was. No matter how significant the trial was, no matter how trying the task was, the Bible says in chapter 5, verse 1, they got to the other side. May I please tell you that we are not sending you out of here just so you get to year 2 and year 3 and say, oh, forget it. We're not sending you out of here just so you get to year 2 and year 3 and say, I don't feel like going any farther. I've got confidence in you that we that have begun a good work. I want you to move to completion. I want you to finish what has been started in you. We are moving from commencement to commencement. You just had a nice commencement in May, but there's going to be another commencement four years from now, five years from now, however long it takes. But I want you to get out of there. You came to pass. You came to pass. You came to pass. It is your responsibility to take this brilliance that God has given to you and to use it for the glory of God. We expect some deansless scholars and some, some presidential scholars and some provosts. We expect some people sitting on these front rows to prove to us that the investment was worth it. I want you to prove to your families that the investment is worth it. I don't know if you checked out how much college costs. Don't you go wasting your mama and daddy's money. We gave you all a scholarship. Don't you waste the church's money. We want you to have a good return on the investment. When you go away to school, you should know it by now. But especially when you go away to school, you should know the difference between wood and wooden. And that's the inside joke. Watching the news and 
Crisis, a storm, and you're like, I don't know how in the world I'm gonna make it. If he's done it before, yeah. 